We're not done quite yet. Like we can go in the vault. I am done. And we can steal everything. Just all of it. From still life. Arrow of filth. Chainmail boots. Some good stuff here. Take it all. Some bolts as well. Makes me wish that Lele was using a crossbow, but we've got a good bow and we've got some arrows. So that's that room done. But there's so much more to loot around here. That goes down. Anything in here? Health potion. Always helpful. A book there. So we'll be able to hand out some gifts back at camp and get even more approval. So we've done that room, done that room. What else is there? Anything in here? Yep, back here. Stone dragon statue, that's good for Alistair. A book there on the tranquil. Finished. Silver chalice. This is all good stuff. That's what we need. Okay, and I guess this takes us down to the main floor now. Yes? Yes. I guess we'll head back to camp then. There's a few things we can sell as well, which is good. And we picked up some money from bodies as well. I need to think about saving some of my money now. Can we make any more bombs? No. That's good. Let's have a look at inventory then and just sort through some stuff. So the crow dagger. I mean, it's pretty good. Can go in my offhand, I guess. I'm going to keep the enchanted daggers because they are unique. The fox's bow. That could be good. So you can't use the fox's bow yet. You need 26 dexterity. Might be something to look into though. I'm tempted to maybe use the crossbow as well though. What do the bolts do? Fire damage, and just chance to not target back. As much as it pains me, I have to get rid of this stuff. She's using a bow and that's an end of it. Eamon shield, uh, is that good for Alistair? More fatigue, but more defence as well. Oh yeah, that's a good shield. Get with that. But we keep have our Aegis as it is unique. I didn't give um, Yazaris to... Uh, what's his name? I haven't given anything to Morrigan either. We'll sort that out in a sec. Going to keep the heavy chainmail boots for... Um, Stan. I need to think about outfitting my uh, my dog as well. I need to think about necklaces. We'll get back to camp. We'll do that as well, I guess. We need to consider what we give Zevran as well. So there's a lot to think about. Keep the Drake scales, but we can sell those. So much stuff to give out. And I think I can give um, Zevra and all that shiny stuff, like the gold bar and whatnot. I think he's a fan of the shiny stuff. I think he's a bit of a magpie. So we'll give him all the necklaces and gold stuff and shiny stuff. I know there's certain gifts he likes as well, like things to do with Tavinta and whatnot. 
And we'll level up everyone back at camp. Because I think by talking to people as well, that actually helps level them up. So we're going to go back to camp. Because well, that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Just checking the volume on my uh, Elgato. It seems okay. And everything seems to be running fine. Now that we're back at the camp, I want to talk about what happened at Redcliffe. I think it turned out quite well, don't you? I just wanted to thank you. You went out of your way to save the Isles family and you did it. Even though it would have been easier not to. There's been so much death and destruction. It... Well, it, it makes me feel good that at least we were able to save something. No matter how small. I owe the Isle that much. If we can stop the blight, we'll save much more. You're right. Hopefully by that time there's still enough of Ferelden left to save. Good. Now that the warm, fuzzy part of the day is over with, we can get back to the ritual dismemberments. Oh wait, it's not Tuesday, is it? <laughs> oh, I love Alistair. I love his humour. It's great. Okay. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to go and see Bodan and sell our junk. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. Let me see your wares. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. Okay, so all I'm going to do, I'm going to sell my junk. Wow, five sovereigns. And I'm going to just buy a couple of things here. We need to buy some flasks. I'm only going to buy four of them. And some corrupt trade junk. I'm going to buy two of them. And that's all I'm doing. Uh, is there any thing in here that I can buy? No. That's it. Leaving it there. Okay. Don't need to buy anything else. Right, next up, let's hand out some gifts. So, first of all, we have Morrigan. I don't think I can sell you anything. Alistair, I can give you the dragon statuette. Is that for me? Really? Wow. I'm... Wow. He's very thankful, isn't he? Lele, I don't think I can give you anything, unfortunately. Maybe the bracelet? I don't know. Win. I know I can give you that. Oh, marvellous. Okay. The Mabari, I can't give you anything. Sten? I can give you that. I am impressed. My thanks. And then Zevran. Right, so I know I can give you... Or I think I can give you the shiny stuff. Like all these rings and whatnot, but I'm just not sure. Okay, let's see. Um, let's give him the shiny gold ring. I think that will be good for him. You have excellent taste. No, okay. So maybe not rings... <laughs> Travel necklace, maybe? You have excellent taste. No. Um. Gold bar? You have excellent taste. So the gold bar was good for him. Uh, but I wasn't able to give him anything like the rings and stuff. I don't think he'll like the bracelet. I think there'll be some gifts. Oh, silver chain. I wonder if that's good for him. How nice. Uh. Not so much. Okay. Well, I think some of these gifts are kind of plus five for diminishing returns. Moderate constitution for Alistair. Minus strength for Sten. Good stuff. All right. Let's talk to Win. What's on your mind? Um. I'd like to ask you something about the circle. I will answer to the best of my ability. How did you become a mage? People don't become mages. They are born mages. 
The talent just surfaces later. But you are asking how I ended up at the Circle. Mm -hmm. I was brought there by the Templars, just like many of the other apprentices. I don't remember very much. I was very young then. How did they know you were a mage? I set a boy on fire. What? It's a long story. I didn't have a family. I never knew my real parents. My earliest memory was of hiding in a hayloft on a farm, trying to keep warm. I was found, and the farmer's wife was kind enough not to send me away. But they had children of their own, and I was never made to feel welcome. The eldest son was the worst. He was always calling me a stray, and throwing anything he could get his hands on at me. And I don't know how it happened, but one day, he just found his hair on fire. Fortunately, there was a large trough nearby. Was he seriously hurt? I had singed his hair and eyebrows, but injured little other than his pride. Who knows what they would have done to me had he been more seriously hurt. Thankfully, all I had to endure was a few nights locked in a cold barn with a bowl of water and a crust of bread. The Templars arrived several mornings later. What happened when you arrived at the tower? I'll never forget the moment the Templars led me into the entrance hall of the tower. I had never seen anything so grand in my life. I stopped being afraid then. I knew I was home. That's a great story. Well, that's about all there is to my tale. That's how I came to the circle. What was life like in the tower? I would be lying if I said it was easy. First, there were rules, and we were constantly watched to make sure we behaved appropriately. Then there was the study of magic. We had to cast the spells just so, control the effects completely. A single word spoken incorrectly, a gesture out of sync, and lack of focus. And we needed to have perfect focus, or we would be in danger. At least you learn the dangers of magic from the circle. Without the circle and my mentors, I would not have been where I am today. And there was joy in life at the circle. The joys of fellowship in knowing that you were not alone in your struggles. In spite of everything, I was happy in the tower. And I loved it. Okay, nothing else to discuss. Okay. One approval from Wynne. All right, let's talk to Lele next. Yes? Something you need? I'd like to ask you something. Yes? What's on your mind? Do you miss anything about Orle? I miss Valroyo. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Valroyo was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Valroyo, streaming from the many windows quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Sounds wonderful. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlais, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orlais, like anywhere else. Sometimes, I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orle. It must have been a big change moving to Lothring. I left behind much leaving Orle, but there is more to life than dresses and furs. It is sad that many have lost sight of this. Orle is very fashionable, almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes... Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. Okay, I'm going to give the more female answer. Oh, I love shoes. When I left Orlais, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colours, of course. It was spring. Oh, that sounds lovely. 
I had my eye on a pair my shoemaker was working on. It was covered in pale blue silk with amber beads on the toe. The shoes made in Orlais were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Ugh, just look at them. I know, right? So ugly and shapeless. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? Okay, I had to give the answers there. Uh, Zephyrin? Here I am. Care to answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Yeah, what does it take to become an assassin? Well... The Crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training. The sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. So you have to be a murderer? Now, now. It need not be thought of so crudely. We all do our share of murdering around here, don't we? An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. Well, what we're doing, is it murder? Or is it self-defense? Because the enemies are attacking us as well. You always use poison then? I do. It is not something inherent in an assassin's skills, however. Merely something complimentary. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets. Shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? Sure. Oh, he just proves. Alistair? Something on your mind? I have questions. Of course. What does a Templar do exactly? Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. You know when you said that? It sounded like he was waiting his entire life to say it. So Templars use magic themselves? You could call it that, sure. The Chantry doesn't look on it the same way, however, since really our talents only work on mages. Against a regular person, I'm just a guy in a metal suit. So you kind of feed off their magic then. Have you hunted any mages? No, I never actually became a full Templar. Duncan recruited me before I took my vows. I was only present during one harrowing. The ritual that they test the mages with. It's not unlike our joining, really. And... Just as deadly. The girl they tested, she had a demon put inside her. To see if she could resist. And she couldn't. Aww. We had to... End it quickly. I have to say, I didn't have much interest in becoming a Templar after that. Could others learn his talents? Perhaps, but there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given Lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. So, were you addicted to this lyrium? Thankfully, no. You only start receiving lyrium once you've taken your vows. Fair enough. You don't need lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. 